So I've got hundreds, literally hundreds, of chameleon care videos on YouTube and not a single failed chameleon care guide. Not a single one. But this is it. We're finally doing it. A veiled chameleon care guide for you guys to get a high level overview of what you need to know when it comes to veiled chameleon care. So without further ado, let's get into the video. First, I want to give a shout out to everyone who sent in pictures and videos of your veiled chameleons. Thank you so much. So when it comes to chameleons, we want to make sure that we have one chameleon per enclosure. We never want to keep multiple chameleons because they can get territorial. If you have a male and a female, they will have babies. <laughs> so it's best to just have one chameleon per enclosure and make sure there's a visual barrier so they can't see each other. So Luna's enclosure is actually a hybrid, which means it's got solid sides. So Neptune and Luna actually can't see each other. So that's one thing to keep in mind. Also, chameleons are look at pets, not animals that we would handle often. So I always say, Go into owning the chameleon as if you were owning a pet fish where you're happy to just look at them. And if the case is that you have a chameleon that has a low fear response and will climb out onto you, amazing. We should never go into assuming this is an animal that you'll be able to interact with often. And if I can give you one piece of advice, no, two pieces of advice would be to one, buy from a good breeder and two, get your enclosure set up beforehand. That being said, veil chameleons make great pets, great animals, and if you can get your enclosure set up beforehand, they really are very doable pets, and I think they just get a bad rap because a lot of people buy them from poor places and have incorrect information and care, so then they end up with a sick animal, and chameleons just have a low margin for error. But veils are probably the number one most popular chameleon in the pet trade, so let's talk about it. So with the enclosure size, the recommended size is going to be 24 inches wide, 24 inches deep, and 48 inches tall. Two feet by two feet by four foot tall. That's for a male or a female. Sometimes you'll see females having a smaller enclosure size. I like to say bigger is better, plus it gives you room for a lane bin, which we'll touch on later. I also would encourage you to go for a screen or a hybrid enclosure. Screen enclosures are great if you live somewhere dry. Hybrid enclosures are great if you live somewhere where you need a little bit more control on the temperature and humidity. Speaking of temperature, let's talk at the top of the enclosure. You'll see a white bulb, kind of round. It's actually kind of yellow when you stick it next to my UVB bulb, but the round bulb that's at the top of the enclosure is the heat bulb. So we need to provide a basking temperature of around 80 degrees Fahrenheit for a female and around 85 degrees Fahrenheit for the males. The slightly lower temperature for females is so that they will lay eggs less often and fewer eggs at one time. Then the rest of your enclosure can be around the 70s. And then at nighttime, we wanna make sure all lights are off, including that heat bulb, and have a temperature of around 55 to 65 degrees Fahrenheit. When it comes to your heat bulb, I would aim for something that's around 60 to 75 watts. I did make a whole video just on heat bulbs in heat that talks more about what to use, why to use it, etc. But those are generally the ranges you should be aiming for. No lights at night, avoid the red heat bulb, and make sure those basking temperatures are appropriate for your chameleon. Next up, let's talk about UVB. This is the super, super important bulb. So there's tons of different kinds of UVB. What you'll see behind me are those long, skinny UVB bulbs. What I would recommend to you is what is called a T5. And the T5 describes the type of bulb that it is. You'll also hear T8. T8 are older technology and just don't penetrate as far into the enclosure as the T5s do. So you want the T5 high output, which is the HO, you'll see sometimes linear UVB bulb. You can get a 24 inch and run it left to right, or you can get a 36 inch, I believe that's right, and run it diagonal, which is what I do. What you want to avoid are the compact UVB bulbs, the ones that come in the chameleon kit, the ones that are just round and squiggly. Those only penetrate a couple inches to the enclosure and don't provide enough UVB for your chameleon, unfortunately. So, with the T5, there's two different brands, Reptisun and Arcadia. I personally rock an Arcadia UVB bulb that tend to last a little bit longer than the Reptisuns, but Reptisun, great brand too. They're a little, usually more available, easier to get your hands on. But you will want to use the Reptisun 5.0 or the Arcadia 6%. Those are equivalent bulbs, and that's what I would recommend if you want to put your bulb right on top of your screen enclosure that is 48 inches tall. Now, you'll hear a lot of people, especially in the Facebook groups and just across the internet, 
giving advice to use a 10.0 or 12%. You can certainly use those. You would potentially be exposing your canine to high levels of UVB. So the best way to know for certain would be to use a solar meter, which is a device that measures the UVI, UV output index, however you want to think about it, of your bulb. And so if you are using the 10.0 or 12%, I suggest raising your UVB bulb just a little bit above the enclosure if you don't own a solar meter, just to err on the side of caution. There's tons of research that has been done on having veils with the 5.0 or the 6% and having enough UVB to sufficiently produce the calcium around the eggs for a veiled chameleon, which tells us that they're within the healthy ranges of that UVI of 3.0. Now, I'm not gonna try and get too technical. I would just encourage you to research about UVB in veil chameleons. Ask why, make sure you're understanding why you're using the things that people are recommending and challenge them. If they can't give you a good rationale, then maybe you should do additional research or ask elsewhere. And just keep in mind, there's no one way to keep a chameleon. There's different ways, and if you're in a community or giving advice from someone that's saying you have to do it like this, my or the highway, I think that's usually a telltale sign that's probably not someone that you should be taking advice from because I think it's best to speak from experiences and recognize that there is more than one way to keep a chameleon. It depends on how your enclosure is set up, your environment, and your specific chameleon. Also on top of my enclosure, you will see another long white bulb that's actually a plant LED. I'm rocking an Arcadia Jungle Dawn LED bar. Totally optional, but I've seen a huge improvement in the growth and health of my plants within the enclosure and just overall brightens it up, which I think is just more enjoyable for the chameleon. Now let's move on to water and humidity. So this is where it gets a little bit different between a veiled and a panther chameleon. So veils have slightly lower humidity requirements with a daytime humidity around 40%, give or take, and then a nighttime humidity of 70% or higher. Ideally, you would want that to be closer to 80, even 100% humidity at night, but I know that can sometimes be a little unrealistic for people in their homes um, and keeping chameleons in captivity, but that is what they experience at night when the fog you know, and dew rolls in in the evening time, and then it would dry out throughout the daytime. So in order to achieve this humidity ranges, what we typically recommend is to mist in the morning once before lights turn on for two to four minutes, let the enclosure kind of dry out, that humidity drop throughout the day, and then mist again in the evening once your lights turn off for two to four minutes, and then run a fogger throughout the evening to increase that humidity. You may see people also using drippers, those are great to have on top of your enclosure throughout the day for a couple hours, a few times a week to give your chameleon additional water sources. What you want to avoid is misting throughout the day, multiple times a day, and using something like a waterfall. Those are just not recommended for chameleons. And again, I have videos that go into more detail on all of those things. An automatic misting system is not required, is definitely a luxury, but it's certainly really, really nice to have when it comes to owning a chameleon. Throwing your lights on timers and an automatic misting system just makes things much more manageable when it comes to owning a chameleon, but you can totally pick up a spray bottle from the Dollar Tree and just manually mist your chameleon. That's totally an option. We also should talk about drinking and hydration. So your chameleon is going to be attracted to movement. So any water droplets, which is why we recommend those misters and drippers so that we can provide moving water for your chameleon. It's not likely that your chameleon is gonna drink from a water bowl. So if you can provide the hydration through the moving dripping water, then you know that they have plenty of drinking opportunities and that higher humidity at night that we talked about actually will allow your chameleon to breathe in that moist air and be hydrated that way as well. You can monitor their poops to check if they're hydrated. And I do have a whole video about poop, so feel free to check that out as well. So let's talk about the inside of the enclosure. You'll see behind me, I have tons of plants and tons of branches for my commands, and that's what you'll want for yours too. So you want to use natural branches. I get mine from outside, properly sanitize those with soap and water, and then pop those into my enclosure, making sure that they're small enough for their little feet to grip around and not too thick, not too thin, making sure that they have tons of different options going different directions, primarily though, horizontal since chameleons tend to move side to side and up and down. Additionally, you'll want to include tons of live plants. Veils are known for eating their plants, and so you wanna make sure you're using live plants because if you're using fake plants, then they could take a munch out of their fake plant, 
not be able to digest it, get impacted, and that can actually be fatal for your chameleon. So making sure that you use live plants that are safe for your chameleon is the best way to go. And then making sure you're using natural branches, avoiding things like mossy vines, um, any sort of jungle vines, avoiding hammocks, anything that could potentially, they could munch on, get impacted. The hammocks um, can actually rip out their nails, so you want to avoid anything that's kind of that like rope material. Um, that's just not recommended for your plants. So safest option, natural branches, life plants, deck it out. And remember, any empty space is unused space. And you want to make sure your plant has tons of places to hide. And a good rule of thumb is if it takes you a good few seconds to spot your chameleon, then they probably feel secure. But if you're across the room and you can see your chameleon or you can just look in there and spot them immediately, odds are they don't have enough hiding places to feel safe and secure. Now, I'm not going to get into too much when it comes to plant recommendations because Again, I have a whole playlist actually just on plant videos, but my number one plant to recommend to you guys is a pothos plant. And those are great because they do very well in chameleon closures. You can totally find them at like Home Depot and Lowe's. They have big leaves that offer drinking surfaces for your chameleon, and they have long, big vines, which can give your chameleon lots of things to climb on. All right, let's move on to bugs. So when it comes to veal chameleons, a lot of people ask me, what they eat and simple thing is live bugs. Will they eat fruits and vegetables? Yes, but it goes back to them eating plants. They aren't seeking out their fruits and vegetables and they shouldn't be intentionally fed fruits and vegetables. They just need to be fed properly gut loaded, properly supplemented live bugs. And then if they do decide to munch within the live plants in their enclosure, that's totally fine. That's why we offer them the live plants versus the fake plants, but you do not need to feed your chameleon any sort of fruits or vegetables and honestly it's not recommended. Also don't feed your chameleon any sort of freeze-dried bugs, they really do need to be fed live bugs and if live bugs like roaches and crickets freak you out then you may want to reconsider if a chameleon is a good pet for you because that's what they have to eat. So in addition to doobie roaches and crickets, some other great options to feed all the time would be silkworms and black soldier fly larvae. If doobie roaches are illegal where you live, which they are in some places, there are tons of other roach species that are illegal that you can definitely check out. Some good treat bugs for your veiled chameleon would be waxworms, superworms, hornworms once they're at least six months or older, and then the occasional mealworm would also be a good treat bug. And these are a great way to build a relationship with your chameleon. Just be mindful that they're not as nutritional, tend to be high in fat, and not something you would want to feed regularly. How much you feed will depend on the age of your chameleon. If you just got yourself a baby chameleon, then they'll eat once a day as much as they'll want to eat, which is typically around 10 to 15 bucks. As they get older, we should taper off how much we're feeding them to avoid chameleon obesity. So typically around eight to nine months old is a good time to alternate to every other day feeding. And once they're an adult, which is around 12 months old, then you want to feed them three to four bugs every two to three days and just monitor their weight to make sure they're not too skinny and not too fat, which you can typically tell with a veil chameleon with their cast, which is the thing that's at the top of their head. So if it's nice and flat, you know they're a good weight. If it's starting to puff out and their cheeks are puffing out, then you know they're a little bit overweight. If you can see their cheekbones and their tailbone, then you know they're probably underweight. In a healthy chameleon, you should also be able to see their ribs. So it's not enough just to feed our chameleons bugs. You also need to gut load and supplement them. Gut loading is the process of feeding those bugs fruits and vegetables so then their bellies are nice and full of these micronutrients which can then be fed to your chameleon. So instead of feeding those directly to your chameleon, you can feed them to the bugs and then the bugs to your chameleon. So some good options would be mustard greens, collard greens, sweet potato, mango, apple, oranges, and if you can throw in some bee pollen, that would be a great gut load as well. So this is something that you would do 12 hours or the night before you feed them to your chameleon so then they have a chance to munch on those and have a nice full belly and then you would feed them in the morning but not before you supplement the bugs. Supplementation is the process of putting on those white powders that you sometimes have seen so then we can help balance the nutritional deficits of using these bugs in captivity versus what they would naturally find in the wild. Without the proper supplements, then your chameleon is at high, high risk for developing health issues such as metabolic bone disease, which can be fatal. So the supplement schedule I would recommend for a veiled chameleon would be to use plain calcium, calcium without vitamin D3 on all your bugs every single time that you feed your chameleon. And make sure it has without D3 because sometimes they sell calcium with D3 and too much D3 can be toxic. Okay. 
So if we do that every single feeding on all of our bugs and then twice a month, on that day, we skip the calcium and we just use what's called a multivitamin, which would have things like vitamin A in it, which are great for their eye health. And if you have a multivitamin that has a D3 in it, then you can just use that two times a month. If your multivitamin doesn't have D3 in it, then you'll need to sprinkle on some D3 as well. So use D3 twice a month, multivitamin two times a month. And if your eyes are getting really big and your brain's turning into mush as I'm talking about this, deep breath, as you could guess, I do have an entire video just on supplementation that walks you through step-by-step step all the different supplements and a great supplement schedule to use for your available chameleon. But this is just a high-level overview. Plain calcium, every single feeding, multivitamin, two times a month with D3. Something to keep in mind with a veiled chameleon is their cask will get bigger and bigger as they get older. So make sure you're being mindful of that basking temperature and how close their head can get to their basking. Well, because I've just seen way too many veil commands burn their cask and then it just falls off, which is pretty disgusting, <laughs> honestly. So that's a special consideration when it comes to veil chameleons. What's cool about veil commands is that you can actually tell if they're a male or a female right out of the egg, which you can't really do with a panther. Well, you, it's much more difficult to do with the panther. Um, so with the veiled chameleon, and this just works with veils, and there are some other chameleon species that this works with, but none that are commonly kept in captivity, on their back feet, there will be this little bump, which is called a tarsal spur. If they have that little bump, then they are a male chameleon. If there's no bump and it's completely smooth, then you know you have a female chameleon. So this is a great way to know if you have a male or a female, and again, you can tell this right out of the egg, so regardless of how old your chameleon is, that's something that you can tell. And this is important, because female veil chameleons will lay eggs. Something they do. <laughs> and they'll lay eggs even if they've never been with a male before. They're in fertile clutches, so they're not gonna be eggs that have little chameleon babies in them, just like chickens will lay in fertile eggs. But you do need to provide her a laying bin or somewhere to lay her eggs, otherwise she can and will get egg bound and die. It's the number one most preventable cause of death for a female chameleon with metabolic bone disease being number one for a male and a female. But if you have proper UVB, proper supplementation, and a laying bin, your chameleon should have no issues living a long, happy, healthy life and laying those eggs. So feel free to check out my video all about egg laying. It's literally like 20 minutes long, talking about how to set up a bin, what to expect, what to do, what not to do, cover it all. So that'll be a good resource for you. Well, I do have an entire video just on, I think it's called 25 signs of a sick chameleon. So as you can see, there's a lot of things that could indicate a sick chameleon. But one I see often with new failed chameleon owners is closed eyes during the day. This is typically a sign of stress or sickness and is not a good sign. And you know, probably something needs to change or you may have bought a sick chameleon. Um, either way, it's not good. So closed eyes, um, lethargy, being lethargic, not really moving, not really eating. Um, those are all signs that your chameleon's probably not doing so hot. And recognize that it will take time for your chameleon to eat in front of you. So give them space to settle in. And if you're still noticing these unusual behaviors, then you may, may need to consider taking them to a reptile vet. Another thing to touch on briefly with veil chameleons is their colors. A lot of times people will see these like dark spots or stripes on them when they're babies. This is typically a sign of stress. And remember, it's best to just leave them alone, try to avoid handling your chameleon and giving them at least two weeks to settle into their new home. And just remember, this is a high level overview video. And again, if you wanna go into the nitty gritties of chameleon care, you will need to do a lot more than watch this one video to learn how to properly care for your veiled chameleon. But I hope this gives you a good starting point so you know what areas you need to focus on, what areas you feel confident in. And at the end of the day, my goal is to make sure you guys are able to provide your veiled commands with long, happy, healthy lives. So I hope this was a helpful overview care guide. And as always, be sure to give the video a thumbs up. Leave any questions or comments down below. Feel free to subscribe so you don't post a new video. You can follow Neptune and all my chameleons on social media at Neptune the Chameleon, where I post daily videos. And you can check out down in the description box my Amazon store, discount links, Patreon merch, and I even offer video consulting when you can chat with me one on one, also linked down below. Otherwise, thank you so much for watching. Have a great day, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye! Top of mind
closure, you'll see another long skinny UV kind of that like uh, material, what is that? Ropey? Rope, there we go. 